Hi everyone, we're here tonight and I can see that there's already quite a few of you here with me. That's nice. After Thursday night's debacle, I was talk I was here. I was talking to myself, but I was here. Anyway, I'm glad you could join us tonight. And just let me clear up one little thing. This is actually live. It is actually 7:30 p.m on the 19th of February 2009 and that's my kitchen dresser behind me and I'm sitting at my kitchen table. So this really is live. It's not recorded. It's not fake in any way. I'm really here and you're really watching me live. It's pretty exciting, I think. Um, and I'm going to talk tonight about, um, hi Maureen, um, groceries I don't buy things I don't buy at the supermarket because I've had some queries about what's on my shopping list. My shopping list is probably a little weird compared to most people's. So I thought if I tell you what I don't buy, because it's the things I don't buy that make the biggest difference to my grocery budget, then perhaps you'll be able to take that information and apply it to your shopping list. And you can figure out the things that you no longer need to buy. Um, oh, people, hi Coralie, hi Michelle, hi Priya. Um, I'm so glad you're all here. So when I do my shopping, it's a bit different to what other people do. Sorry, I just have to be unique, don't I? I can't be like everybody else. So I tend to do one big shop once a year and I usually do it between Christmas and New Year in that week where everybody's busy at the Boxing Day sales and not busy at the supermarkets. And that's where I do the bulk of our groceries for the year. But even so, I still have to do um, a fortnightly top up of things like dairy, milk, obviously, um, fresh fruit and veg if we need it. And I try to replace the things that I'm using from my stockpile. So the things, when I do that though, there are whole aisles in the supermarket that I don't go to. And our Aldi only has five aisles anyway. And I tend to completely skip the two middle aisles. I don't go down them at all. So I go in and I have my list in my trolley and, or well, Tom has the trolley because I, try to get him to come with me to do the heavy stuff but I have the list the trolley and I hit the store and I pick up just what we need so I skip the biscuits I don't buy sweet biscuits except I will say except because someone's going to say I saw you and you had sweet biscuits in your trolley except um the Arnott's lemon crisp every now and then because they are my absolute favourite treat. And during summer, when I'm doing a lot of no-bake um, slices and things, I tend to buy the Aldi Ginger Nuts, um, Mari or Arrowroot and the um, Scotch Fingers and use those as the base for a lot of no-bake slices. Now, I do have a recipe to make that biscuit base to be used for no bake slices but it kind of defeats the purpose in summer when i don't want to put the oven on to have to bake the base to do the no bake slice so 89 cents for a packet of biscuits um, every couple of weeks keeps everybody's sweet tooth happy and i don't mind that but once the weather cools down and i start baking again i stop buying those biscuits um, I don't buy chips. I do occasionally buy corn chips. If we're having haystacks, I will sometimes buy corn chips. Usually we will have um, pita chips instead. They're cheaper, they're healthier. If I season them, they can be nicer. And pita chips are great for seasoning because you can season them with whatever you like. You can season them with onion powder, garlic powder, herbs, little chilli, whatever you like. So I don't buy those things. So that's one whole aisle we tend to avoid. 
then I don't buy pasta sauce. I make pasta sauce. It's easy. You don't need to buy a jar, even if it is on half price at $1.69. You don't need to buy it. It's really easy to make. Um, I don't buy the, um, oh, what are they called, Hannah? The um, chicken tonight type things and the canton type things. Pre-made sauces. Pre-made sauces in jars, yeah. We tried them years ago. We didn't like them. You know, a homemade sweet and sour, a homemade beef and black bean, a homemade um, curry or honey mustard chicken, so much nicer, so much nicer, cheaper and really easy. And if you shop for ingredients, you've already got the ingredients in your house. You don't need to buy that sauce. You have what you need there to make it. Now, all those recipes are in the recipe file too if you need them. Um, and there's a couple of different ones, butter chicken, homemade butter chicken is to die for, much nicer than the jarred sauces. So I don't buy those things. I don't buy um, things like tortillas, English muffins, crumpets, um, unless they're really on a really good special or marked down to about a quarter the price if they're around the 45 60 cents a packet mark then i will buy them i'll put them in the freezer but they are things that are really easy to make too if you haven't tried it don't be afraid it is simple if i can do it anyone can so how are we going oh jody yes lemon crisp biscuits they're the best aren't they hi barb i'm so glad to see you because i was just talking to hannah about you and said i haven't seen you around nice to see you Hi, Jeanette. Welcome. And Meryl, hello. Okay. So there are things I don't buy. I skip that aisle too. I tend to buy pasta, as in dry pasta, so spaghetti and twirls or little shells, um, rice, um, and that's about it. Tinned goods, I buy tinned tomatoes occasionally if they're a really good sale, half price sale, um, for around 69 to 70 cents a can, I will buy them. Um, the Annalisa brand, they're really nice and thick. They're Italian tomatoes, they're divine. So sorry, Aldi, but they leave the Aldi tin tomatoes for dead. So when they're on half price at Woolworths, I will buy 12 tins. Um, baked beans, tomato soup, and I usually have six tins of cream of chicken soup. Now, I know I can make it, and I know I can make the tomato soup, but time isn't always my friend. And sometimes paying for convenience pays more in other areas. So tomato soup and cream of chicken soup are things I usually have. Then I have beetroot and tinned pineapple. I don't buy any other tinned products other than um, tuna and occasionally salmon. If we're going, if Wayne and I are going away, I'll treat us to a tin of red salmon, but it's a treat for us. We don't have it all the time. Um, they're the things that, the tin things I buy. I don't buy tomato paste. I don't buy um, tinned meals. I don't buy tinned much actually that's that's about the limit of it occasionally I will buy a can of a tin of fruit for a special occasion if it's um, on sale at SPC I might pick up half a dozen tins of peaches or pears or two fruits and use them but we can get fresh fruit so much and it's so much nicer and if I want to make a cobbler or something, buying a couple of apples or picking them off our tree, we, when we can beat the birds, picking them off the tree and um, using them is, is much nicer and, of course, cheaper. So they're the things that I don't buy in tins. I don't buy paper towel. I haven't had paper towel in my kitchen for a gazillion years until Christmas and... The lovely Wendy very, very kindly gave me a double pack of paper towel because she knows I don't buy it. So I'm sparingly using that paper towel, but I don't miss paper towel. Um, I have a strict no tissue policy in the house, 
um, and I prefer to use hankies, but I have a daughter who likes to use tissues, so she buys her own. So you might see a box of tissues floating around in the background somewhere. I don't know where they are, but they're usually just behind me. They're on the dresser. Um, I prefer hankies. I've, I grew up with hankies, and I hate tissues in the wash. So I don't like tissues. I don't buy those. I don't buy paper serviettes. We have cloth serviettes. Um, some were given to me as gifts, some I've made, some I've picked up from op shops. Um, we use those instead. So not a lot of paper products. I buy baking paper, foil and cling wrap um, on the huge big catering rolls. Um, usually when Aldi has it on sale. Uh, one big thing of cling wrap lasts me about five years because we don't use a lot of it. Baking paper I go through a lot of, but I do reuse it. So it gets used and used and used until it's so brown and brittle that it falls apart on the tray. I, you know, don't waste the baking paper. And the same for the foil. If I'm covering something with foil, I'll take it off. If it's reasonably clean on the inside, it gets washed, hung up to dry, folded and ready to use again. Uh, the same for foil that I've used for garlic bread. It gets um, wiped out and kept in a separate bag. So I know that's the garlic bread foil and just gets reused again. It's not that a little bit of foil is that expensive, but it's a lot of little, lot of little spends that add up to the big costs. So I try to keep the little spends to a minimum so that I don't have any big costs. And I hope that makes sense. So... Who's here? Right, okay. What else? Yogurt. Now, you all know I don't buy yogurt. I make yogurt. And congratulations, Diana, on your successful, I hope she comes on tonight, hope she has um, and she can share her success. She made her first lot of yogurt and it was a hit, she told me. So, yay. Um, it's easy to make and it costs a dollar a kilo if you make it yourself to my recipe as opposed to... Some of them are over $7 a kilo, the fancier yogurts. That's a huge difference. So that $6 can go to a kilo of mince. This mince is on sale this week at Australian Butcher for Melburnians for $5.99 a kilo. I posted it on Facebook anyway on Cheapskates Chatter, all their specials this week. Um, so go over and have a look at those. And I do buy meat. Everyone can buy meat, so I'll to that. Don't buy pizza. Um, we make our pizzas, or rather the boys make their pizzas. I don't make them. They do pizza every Thursday night for their dinner. They make their own to the way they like them. So I don't make pizzas. The three pizzas they make cost around between 3 and $4, and that depends on the fillings they put on the top of them. They are massive pizzas. They mound them up. So that often there are bits left to go back into the fridge after dinner and they have it the next day for lunch. I also don't buy frozen chips. I don't buy frozen wedges. Sometimes you'll see me pop a packet of potato gems into the trolley, um, usually in winter because they are quick. If I've got the oven on, I can put those in and have those with dinner too. And I can't make those. They're just too fiddly. So I buy those. I tend to buy the Aldi ones, they're a reasonable price and a kilo usually does is about two meals. I do make wedges, wedges are the easiest thing in the world to make and I don't eat hot chips, I don't know why I don't eat hot chips when I eat hot wedges but I don't like hot chips. So if the family are having chips, I'll have something else but they're easy to make too, it's as simple as slicing the potato and I found a little... Um, tip that a fish and chip shop friend owner friend gave me a long time ago was to cut your chips up put them in the hot oil for a minute take them out let them drain and cool and then cook them again and they go crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside and they're the perfect chip so when i'm doing chips that's generally what i do 
so it take it's a bit of a process too then so that's another reason i'm not a fan of chips i also don't make jam oh sorry don't buy jam make jam all the time hannah makes jam the boys could make jam jam's really easy to make it's simply boiling fruit and sugar together on the stove it's simple I was horrified. Hannah's been making jam with me since she was about seven or eight. She's been making it on her own since she was about 10 or 11. I was horrified to learn that jam making is actually a year 12 home ec subject. It's so simple. It's not, if you haven't made jam, go to the website, have a look at the um, preserving ebook. It's easy to do very simple to do and I've never had a failure I don't use pectin I don't use jam setter and I've never had a failure so it's a simple thing to do I will um, qualify by saying that sometimes it's not always cheaper than buying jam if you can buy it on sale um, because the fruit can be rather expensive Excuse me, I've got the hiccups now, pardon me. But if you can get, um, I got last week 1.5 kilos of strawberries for $5. That made six, seven, nine jars, nine jars of jam. So for around, it used about... Uh, $1.80, so $6.80 for nine jars of jam. So you can't buy it that cheap, not nice jam anyway. So, yes, um, microwave jam is brilliant and I'm rather fond of using the microwave for marmalade because it speeds the process up hugely, cuts it down by about 24 hours. <laughs> so microwave marmalade is really good too. Who Louise has made her yogurt, I'm guessing, Louise. Yep, beautiful. Okay. Let me get rid of that hand. Well, right. Okay. <gasps> Apple jam sounds delicious, Freya. I think I'd like that. Six minute microwave, a uh, six minute lemon butter is done in the microwave. Um, and it could be lime butter, it could be orange butter. It doesn't have to be lemon butter, just switch out the juice. Just remember that because of the eggs in it, it needs to be kept in the fridge and it needs to be used within two weeks if you do that. Um, so that's probably one that's not a great idea, not a great. Thing to be making in bulk unless you're going to give it away straight away. Yes, Can you freeze it? No, you can't freeze lemon butter. It um, The curds separate. Hannah just asked if you could freeze it. It separates when it thaws. Um, so unless you're going to use it as a cake filling, it doesn't... It, look, it tastes fine. It won't hurt you or anything. It tastes fine. It just looks ugly. So what else is there? Oh, bagged salads, please, people, why is anyone, why are they even still selling them? Bagged salads are so expensive. The bagged um, lettuce leaves, the bagged baby spinach leaves, the bagged um, coleslaws and things like that are so expensive. So I don't buy them. Um, we do grow lettuce and we grow cucumber, we grow beans and we have quite a large veggie garden so I don't have to buy them but if I did I'd be buying the lettuce and the cucumber and the onion and the carrot and the cabbage and whatever else I needed for those salads and making them from scratch during the summer I have big uh, lock and lock containers great big lock and lock containers usually on a Sunday night or a Monday morning I will do coleslaw I will do a green salad I will do a big potato salad and a big pasta salad and put them in the fridge I don't put the dressing on the coleslaw or the green salad until we're ready to eat it and put
put the put them in the fridge in the containers they stay great and perfectly edible for five days without a problem and that's my week's worth of salads done and it only takes probably 20 minutes all up to do that so buying bag salads is a huge waste of money and there's been some talk lately about the actual um, risk with with bag salads uh, you may have noticed or you may have picked up on Facebook or the news that um, during our winter, the US had quite a few outbreaks of food poisoning uh, due to dirty bag salads. Um, so the recommendation now is even if you buy a bag salad, don't assume that it's clean. It should be, but don't assume that. Wash it before you eat it. So just a warning for you. Uh, what else did I buy? Pies. We have a pie maker. We have a Breville pie maker that is older than Hannah. We bought it actually before, just before she was born. And it's a brilliant thing. If you don't have a pie maker, Mother's Day is coming up. If you like pies, perhaps, that might be you could drop a subtle hint for a pie maker for Mother's Day. It's I know it's another appliance in the kitchen. It's probably you'll think it's another gadget. If you like pies, you will use it. Eight minutes and you've got, well, I have a four pie thing. Uh, eight minutes and I have four pies cooked and ready to serve. Now, the beauty of that is you don't need to use pastry for the base. You can. And I use short crust pastry in the base and puff pastry on the tops. But it doesn't matter. You can use either or. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you. But if you don't have pastry, you can use bread. You can use wraps. You can use phyllo pastry. You can use um, tortillas, anything like that as the um, holder, the base of your pie and the top of your pie. And the fillings can be leftovers. They could be baked beans, it could be tin spaghetti, or it could be homemade spaghetti. It could be leftover casserole, creamed corn, whatever you like for those fillings in the pies. And they are really handy for a quick meal, but a great way to use up your leftovers without um, having to eat the same thing again and they freeze so you can put them in the freezer wrap them up put them in the freezer pull them out and reheat them and have a quick meal on a weekend or a night time you know some nights when the kids were doing basketball we wouldn't get home till 7 30 or 8 o'clock and we needed quick dinners pies those pies were brilliant for that so i don't buy pies and you can use them for sweet pies too not just savory just saying Pie maker will also do quiche. Um, you can do quiche in them. You can do scrambled eggs in them. You can make donuts in them. Make donuts in them. What else can we do in them? There's all sorts of... And if you Google okay. pie maker, there's so many um, ideas for them that you won't regret it. If that's the one thing you ask for for Mother's Day, the family will love you if they like pies. Um, so... I don't buy cordial, I make it. I don't buy soft drink. If you come into our home and there's soft drink in our home, someone else has bought it, not me. I buy chocolate. Everybody's got to have chocolate. But I tend to buy it on the sale when it's half price and I'm getting cheesier and cheesier about my chocolate. I keep messing with the recipe and changing it on me. I buy lollies for birthdays and christmas otherwise we don't buy those we skip that aisle during the year we don't buy them i don't buy flavored coffees i don't buy milk flavored milks things like that i don't buy cottage cheese because it's too easy to make i don't buy Custards, they're really easy to make and it doesn't have to be done on the stove. It can be done in the microwave. A microwave custard is so simple. 
takes about five or six minutes and it's so smooth and so lovely. I don't buy sauces, tomato sauce, barbecue sauce, um, Worcestershire sauce. I just don't buy them. They're easy enough to make. Um, I don't buy, what else don't I buy? Plus, my mind's gone blank. There's a lot. There is a lot I don't buy. There is a lot I don't buy. But instead, I do buy ingredients. So I buy flour, I buy sugar, I buy butter, I buy eggs, I buy coconut. I will buy chopped chips. Um, I will buy herbs and spices. I buy fruit and vegetables. I buy meat. And all of those things are the ingredients that I need to make all the things that I don't buy. So my shopping trolley is loaded to the hilt it's absolutely always overflowing when I do a big shop with those things but it's not full of one purpose items if I bring something home I like it to be able to, to multitask so the flour can be used for bread it can be used for cakes it can be used for thickening gravies it can be used for thickening casseroles it can be used to make tortillas or wraps it can be used for scones. It can be used for uh, donuts. So it's a multitasking ingredient. Ditto the sugar. Um, I don't buy gravy powder. I have some, but I don't buy it as a regular rule because gravy is one of those other things that's really easy to make. And you might remember your mother or your grandma making gravy in the pan. She'd take the... Um, meat out of the pan and drain off some of the fat and then she'd add flour to the pan and stir it till it went brown and all smooth and then she'd slowly add cold water a little bit of salt and pepper and that was gravy that's the best gravy you could ever get it's flavored to suit what was cooking so if you were cooking a chicken you've got chicken gravy if you were cooking uh, roast beef you've got beef gravy if you're cooking rissoles it's a rissole gravy it suits the food that you were cooking so gravy powders I don't even know what's in them but not terribly much if you feel the need to flavor your gravy your homemade gravy a little soy sauce or a little Worcestershire sauce a dash of garlic a pinch of um, Italian herbs even a light pinch of chili is easy that's the other thing I don't buy I don't buy taco seasoning I don't buy enchilada sauce I don't buy um what's the other thing burrito mix they're all really easy things to make and all those recipes are on the website too so you can google them and find them simple and easy to make breadcrumbs breadcrumbs oh please if you're still buying breadcrumbs stop right now no more breadcrumbs. Save your crusts, any stale bread, put it in the freezer until you've got half a loaf or so. And then all you do is if you've been using the oven, when you've finished, put them on the racks in the oven, lay out the crusts and the slices of bread in the oven. I like to put a wooden spoon in the door just to keep it open just a little and let that bread dry. And that will give you dried breadcrumbs. I like to season them, but I do that as I'm using it so that I have always have a container of plain breadcrumbs. But if I'm going to season them, then when I'm ready to use them, whatever I'm using gets seasoned so that I don't have a whole heap of seasoned and no, no plain. You can also um, make fresh breadcrumbs and freeze them. And that's as simple as taking your stale bread and either grating it on a grater or putting it into your food processor and giving it a whiz until they turn into crumbs. And then I just tip them into a Ziploc bag and pop them in the freezer. Fresh breadcrumbs are really good on schnitzels. If you haven't had a schnitzel with fresh breadcrumbs, try it. Add a little, um, little parsley and a little lemon zest to them as to before you crumb them and they will be divine. That is so good like that. Icy poles, there's a whole thing in this month's journal about ice blocks. We don't do that. I don't buy ice cream except for Christmas, but I do make ice cream, and it's the condensed milk and whipped cream ice cream. It's really easy, which leads me to condensed milk because I don't buy that either because that's so easy to make, 
and costs now less than half the price of one tin or it's, and the tins are getting smaller have you noticed um, so that you can make around two and a half cups of condensed milk for under two dollars so why would you buy it when you make it it's, and that's simple as putting the ingredients in your food processor and whizzing them. Or if you don't have a food processor, use a stick blender and then pouring it into jars. It freezes too. Um, when you make it, someone messaged me and said it was really thin. Yes, it is. It's going to be thin. It will thicken as it stands. It will set as it stands. So pop it in the fridge to chill. It'll be ready to go in half an hour or so. Homemade condensed and it tastes just like the tinned one homemade condensed milk is so good i do buy butter but when i can get cream marked down i pop it in the freezer until i'm ready to make butter that's really easy to do too i mentioned cottage cheese ricotta ricotta is easy to make it's not always cheaper to make it though when it comes to choosing what to make and what to buy weigh up why or think about why you're choosing to make it is it the cost because if it is you need to make sure that it is actually going to be cheaper to make it don't forget to add in your time if it's something particularly time consuming um, to make sure that it's worthwhile some things it's just not worth making time wise and cost wise ricotta is one of those things now homemade ricotta is gorgeous but it takes a bit of time and it takes a lot of milk and it costs more than it does to actually um, buy it so and if you can buy it on sale or buy it marked down it will freeze too and it's perfect for using now where are we apple jam okay does anyone have any questions Person. Sorry, folks. We seem to have a. Thank you, darling. Oh, some people are just gross. Sorry. I apologise. If I could block them permanently, I would. Okay. So, any questions? That's what I was going to ask, wasn't it? What's a quick filling for pies? Quick filling for pies? baked beans tin spaghetti with a sprinkle of cheese that's hannah's favorite um if you have less leftover part if you're doing pasta spaghetti spag bowl save some of the sauce that makes a great filling in pies uh joy of quilting our our lovely joy likes to use braised steak and onions and she uses the aldi braised steak and onions that comes in a tin in the pies so anything like that makes any of those tin stews the um harvest irish stew or lamb hot pot or whatever they are all good in pies if you don't have a homemade one to go into it egg and bacon can't go past that and that's as simple as um frying off some bacon and putting it in cracking an egg on top of it putting the top on and baking it mm, do we use generic milk powder Yes, well, I use Aldi milk powder um, and I use milk powder for custards, sauces, white sauce, cheese sauce. Um, in baking, if I'm doing cake mixes, which is another thing I don't buy, but they're easy to make, um, I'll use powdered milk in the cake mixes. Now, powdered milk these days isn't necessarily cheaper than fresh milk so depending on which one you buy um, so just be aware if you're thinking that you're going to save money using powdered milk for everything it may not be so check your prices work out how many liters you get from your packet and how much it costs per liter as opposed to what your fresh milk will cost you yeah mm -hmm. so is it worth all the time involved to make sauces and etc um, if you're a single person, she finds it easier to just buy their sauces when they're on special. 
Narelle, if you're on your own, making, they're probably, okay, it's always going to be worth it, but it will depend on how you're going to use them. So if you have a recipe that makes six litres of tomato sauce and you're on your own and you only use tomato sauce once in a blue moon, then no, it's not going to be worth it. But if you like tomato sauce, if you can gift it to someone, use it to make up hampers, things like that, then it might be worthwhile. Again, it's one of those things where the cost of buying needs to be weighed against the actual cost of, of making it because sometimes buying just is cheaper. It's, it's as simple as that. Now, you could try half recipes. Halving the recipes, there's a recipe for tomato sauce on, on our in our recipe file and it makes, I think, two jars, so probably about a litre. Um, if you don't use a lot of it, that might be a good way to start. But look for the smaller, the smaller um, recipes or halve them. Most, of, most recipes can be halved successfully. Um, just be very careful with your with your measurements and make sure that you have everything so that the quantities are correct. Um, especially, not so much with sauces, but especially with baked products, because baking tends to be a bit of a precise science, not necessarily a hit and miss one. If you really like um, preserving, making things and preserving them and get great enjoyment out of it, go right ahead and do it because there's also, there's also that factor to weigh in too. Uh, I've blocked them, but there's new accounts popping up. So there's nothing they can do. Uh, uh, right. Okay. Sorry, folks, I don't know where these people are coming from, but. They're just random people that look for live YouTube videos to just do, make comments. Nothing you can do well, about it. Go away because we don't like you. I don't watch them. Oh, well, how do they make comments if they don't? Sorry, folks, I'm learning here. Hope you all are too. I'm they really. Find the videos, comment, and then go. Mm. Yeah, no, Aussies aren't uptight, whoever you were. Yeah, I apologise, Susan. Yes, Emma, you can freeze tomato sauce. Oh, I meant to, um, for Emma, Hannah, could you quickly, sorry, darling, would you mind going and getting the um, little round yoghurt container out of the cupboard? Emma, I was just going to show you the um, Aldi, it's the corner cupboard, the Aldi yogurt thermos. The Easy Yo one is the big tall one. Um, the Aldi one is sort of squat and round. Now she can't find the lid. I had it the other day making yogurt. Just so that you know what to look for. And I think that Hanson's make a yogurt um, thermos too. So it... Um, and I think it's similar to the Aldi one. Oh, Thanks, sweetheart. Be, oh, gosh. There we go. That's it. So it's that. And it's nice and round. Can you see? Yeah. And the little tub just fits in there. And it holds a litre of yoghurt, same as the um, Easy O one does. But it's just a better shape. It, it fits better in my fridge than the taller Easy O. So I thought I'd show it to you because you were talking about it. Um, yeah. What else? Yeah, you're all no more questions. How often are they on sale at Aldi? How often are they on sale at Aldi? Two or three times a year. Um, and they're around the $14.99, I think they were last year. But that gives you the thermos and 
two of the containers to go inside it where with EZO, they're often on sale for about $11.99 half price at Woolworths or Coles, but you only get the one container. And it's the big. And it's the big, long, tall one. Um, look, if you want to try yoga, you don't need to have a special thermos and you don't need to have special containers. Or any wide mouth thermos that will hold a litre a liter jar with a screw top lid will work just fine. So. And look at op shops. Yeah, and look at op shops. Hannah got hers um, last week, $4. It doesn't look like it's ever been used, does it? It's beautiful. So, and she's been giving them as gifts to her friends for two or three years and never bought one for herself. So, finally, we oh found goodness. one. No, oh, she uses mine, that's true. She fin finally found one for herself. So, there it goes. Um, so. yes prayer of course you can make yogurt during winter now if your house is warm then it's not a problem but if you think that the kitchen might be a bit too cool um, put a towel over the thermos so make a container put it in put the water in put the lid on and then just wrap a towel around it sometimes if it's particularly cold overnight because I do my yoga overnight if it's particularly cold overnight, when I get up in the morning, I'll um, drain the water and top it up with fresh boiling water and put the lid on for another couple of hours. But no, you can make yoga all year round. I make it when we go camping because it doesn't need any special, it doesn't need electricity, it doesn't need any special tools or anything. It's really easy to do all year round. Okay, guys, look, I'm really sorry, but these people are just being revolting. And Hannah's going flat chat trying to remove them all. Okay. So if there's no more questions, I might um, say goodnight for tonight and start doing some reporting with these. Oh. Horrible people. This is one of the things that I um, really hope to avoid, but never mind. Gosh. Oh, the Link family, you can interact and ask questions. Um, that's time. why we're live, but it does take time. But I'm thinking that perhaps it's all the spammers yeah yeah so oh how are people who work full-time with young kids supposed to find time to make well how long do you think it takes to make something I guess right the link family has asked how are people who work full-time with young kids supposed to find the time to make everything well, for a start, you don't have to make everything. But in all honesty, it doesn't take long to do these things. It's just getting off your patootsie and actually doing them for the most part. And I know, I know it can be difficult and I know it can be tiring. I had three under four and a husband that worked away from home and I was often on my own and it's it's hard work having little kids and I work too but you do it and it, it think about um, how long it takes you to go to the supermarket to wander find a car park wander around pick up what you want stand in line to get through the register go back out to the car park, battle the traffic to get home, come home, unpack it all, put it all away, and then you've still got to cook whatever it is you bought. That all takes time too. And I'd say if you're doing that, no wonder you're exhausted. I guess that sounds exhausting to me. I would make, look, it's, it takes no time to make jam. It takes probably five minutes to prepare the fruit and the sugar put it in the pot on the stove. Then all you have to do 
is stir it every now and then. It takes about 10 minutes to get the jars ready, um, sterilise them and have them hot, ready to put the um, fresh jam in, and then it's done. That That isn't hard. It's... Um, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long to whip up a cake, under five minutes to whip up a cake or a batch of muffins and put them in the oven. Once they're in the oven, your job's done. You don't do anything till that ding goes off and you can take them out. Um, your work is done. You still have to clean up, but that should only take a few minutes too. It, it's, not, it's not hard and I think that a lot of the time, we overcomplicate it and we talk ourselves out of it. It's a bit like making your bed in the morning. If you get up, go and have your shower, come out, make your bed, it's done. You don't have to worry about going back into the bar, uh, the bedroom later in the day to make the bed. It's done. It's done. The job's done. It takes under a minute to make a bed. It's done. But we talk ourselves out of it because oh, nobody likes to make the bed. It's such a big chore, but it's not. Um, we could say the same thing for hanging the washing on the line, couldn't we, Hannah? She's made it up. She doesn't like hanging the washing. She'll do the washing. She'll take it out and put it in the basket. She doesn't like hanging it on the line. But it only takes a few minutes. And it's done. We spend so much time talking ourselves out of it that it turns into a chore that is never going to be done when really it's nothing. Um, cleaning the bathroom as we go. So as soon as you finish brushing your teeth and washing your face, swish and swipe the basin and the toilet and it's done. It takes, again, under two minutes and it's done. It's not hard. And it's the same with cooking. It doesn't take long to peel some veggies and put them on the stove. Once they've started cooking, your job is pretty much just watching and you can set the timer, come back, check them. It's done. It's easy. And when you consider the boys make pizzas on Thursday night, and I know I keep harping about pizzas, but it's something everyone can relate to. The boys make pizzas on, th on Thursday night and it takes them 20 minutes from start to when they take them out of the oven to eat them. It takes 35 to 40 minutes to get it delivered. So they've eaten and cleaned up before they could even have had it delivered. It's done. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't talk yourself out of it. And if you think it's something that's going to take forever, choose a weekend when you have a bit more time or start small. Start small. Start with washing powder. It takes under two minutes to make a, load of, a batch of washing powder. It'll save your fortune. So do that. Oh, and one more thing, doesn't matter how small your children are, they can help. So get them involved. Give them little things to do and get them involved and train them young so that they are always then able to not only fend for themselves but fend for their families when they have families of their own. Okay. Sorry, Jenny. No, well, we weren't going to be nearly finished, but these spammers are really annoying. Okay, so okay, yogurt and Christmas. All right. Oh, look, you don't need Susan. You don't need um, anything special. Um, to make the soap powder, um, I'm glad you've got a grater from the op shop that's really good and a spare grater, but you're grating soap on it and when you think about what you're going to wash it with anyway, it's detergent. So as long as it's washed, um, rinsed off thoroughly and dried properly, it'll be fine to use, um, use for your food. Uh, the same thing with um, when I'm doing soap. I only have one stick blender. I use the stick blender from my kitchen is what I use to make my soap because it, it's washed. 
thoroughly and it's already soapy so I don't need to add detergent to the sink when I'm cleaning it. So um, don't worry about when you're doing the washing powder, you don't need any special tools. Just what you've got and make sure they're clean thoroughly um, before you use them for your onions or your carrots or mixing up a dough or something and it'll be fine. Right. You're a great mum, Rosalie, getting out of bed earlier to make a cake. Don't think I've ever done that. Rosalie gets up early on Sundays to make cakes for her kids' lunches. Mm. Spoiled kids. Hope they appreciate it. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying making your bed, Emma. That's wonderful. Yes, Priya, that's exactly what I do. We get up, Wayne goes into the bathroom. While he's in the bathroom, I'm making the bed and tidying up the bedroom. He comes out, I go and have my shower. When I get out of the shower, I use the bath mat to dry the screen and the walls and the floor. And that way it um, never goes mouldy or mildewed and I don't have to scrub it. And then hang the bath mat up to dry and swish and swipe the basin and the toilet, straighten the towels, and it's done. I don't have to go back in there until bedtime. It's wonderful. Yep. You're doing a great job, too. Yes, pizza bases can be made and frozen. If you're going to freeze them, something we worked out over time is par cook them. So I pop them on the pizza stones for about 10 minutes, take them out, cool them, and then freeze them. And then they're ready to go. It just gives a nicer base when they're recooked. Um, what else? Okay. All right. I know I said I was going. It looks like hopefully they've all gone away, but never mind. So if there's no more questions, no more questions? No. Right. Now, remember, please like us. I'm really sorry, but I hope you do like us. Um, subscribe if you haven't already and share. We have a giveaway. When we get to 1,000 subscribers, we will have a massive, it's a massive giveaway. I've been collecting things for about the last two weeks. I have a big box put aside of things um, for the giveaway and oh, what else oh if you've got a question in the show notes underneath there'll be a link to the form so if you want me to answer a question on the show please just and i haven't done it here fill out the form and i'll do my best to answer it for you otherwise i'll be back on thursday night when we are going to show you some really neat preserving jars we found the other day and make something yummy in the kitchen don't know what it is yet, but it will be something yummy. Okay. Thank you so much for persevering through all this um, spam and horribleness. I do really apologise. And I thank you so much for sticking with me. Okay. I'll see you on Thursday. Won't end, loss. I'm still here. <laughs> oh, I haven't done anything. There we go.